They're saying I can't hear you. If you can hear me, you two people, tell me if you can. But as of right now, you can. It, uh, I didn't hear you. I hope you can hear me. Who was that? Uh, Black Beauty, how are you? Uh, can you hear me now? Anyways, so again, guys, you must be responsible in life. You must have your ability, and that's what this show is going to be about this week. These are what my quotes are about this week. This is what my responsibility is talking about even the war in Israel, talking about New York City crime, talking to you people, because, you know, last week some people said to me, well, Hashim, uh, 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 your show is too uh, non-political, your show is too non-funny, uh, or too funny, or, you, or you're going off track. Let me tell you something. I'm here not only to entertain you, but to advise you, to give you information. But yeah, I'm here to entertain you. Let's be honest with each other. And I'm not going to bore you out of your heads, because if I'm bored, you're bored. I'm a regular person just like you. I'm a regular person that listens to this show or listens to talk radio or watches YouTube videos or keeps my news updated on Instagram. I want to know what's going on. I want to know the truth. And, and I'm going to tell you a lot of truths this week, a lot of things that have bothered me this week, a lot of good things that have bothered me. But, but I need you guys to understand that being responsible in this world is the most important thing, being a responsible father being a responsible caretaker, being a responsible worker, no matter what you do, being a responsible, most importantly, advocate or, or, or even a volunteer, very important. If you're not going to be responsible, you're not worth it. You know, being a responsible parent this week, uh, 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 my kid had a bris. I invited all of you to come. Not too many came, about 150 people showed up. And afterwards... My, my in-laws who were helping with my son with the baby were a little exhausted. They were tired. They were aggravated. So I took the babies. Do you think when you take them to a park, you don't have to watch them every moment? Something could happen. You're right. They're locked in a place. And I had my wife in one corner. And I had uh, 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 my sister in another corner. And I had uh, my sister-in-law there. So there was no way for them to get out. But you got to keep your eyes there. You got to be responsible. Again, People do disappear with children. There are missing children. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds. They're saying one per every 27 seconds or one for every 180, whatever. Kids are still disappearing. How is that possible? How, how, is, how is sex trafficking possible? How is slavery still in the 21st century possible? How is crime? I know. How is crime is possible? You know, they say crime is down. Welcome. First, of all, I want to welcome all my listeners uh, on the uh, WNSR, 620 AM radio. Thank you. Welcome for coming. WNEW, FM HD3. Thank you for joining us right now on the show. You know, we started really about five minutes before you on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So welcome to the, to the live show. And WPIVD or whatever it is, and I'm not making fun of you down in Miami, but welcome to the Just Enough Heshi show. And, and, and I have a lot to discuss, a lot to tell you, a lot of things that, that aggravate me. I'm not here to make fun of people, but I'm here when I do make fun of them or, or, or to be sarcastic or make a comment, as my producer says, because I'm upset. I'm a citizen like you, and things are not going the way they're supposed to go. This world is supposed to be a better place. We're supposed to be able to feed people. You know, we were joking around in one of my groups, uh, uh, in the Republican group. They're voting for Nikki Haley. I said, why? Oh, because Trump won automatically. I said, so you're going to waste your vote? Your vote is a serious thing, guys. This is not a joke. Your vote. Anyways. Ah, Black Beauty says they hear me. But your vote is a serious vote. And the guy says, well, he wins anyways. We're voting for Nikki Haley. You can't do that. You got to be serious. You got to make sure that we feed our people. We have enough food. You know, they raised our food prices. For $68, what I was able to get for a whole week's supplies, I could barely even get maybe two, a meal or two or for two people, maybe three people. Are you joking? Gasoline right now, I was there today. Today, I filled up at the pump. What I was able to do three years ago for $30 costed me $70. Do you understand? That's two weeks worth of gas or whatever the thing is that I had to spend in one week. So I'm not complaining because I understand about inflation, but we have so much that we could do that we deregulate, take away regulations. Stop hurting the people. And I want to give you my quote. I know nobody's going to laugh at my joke this week since I have no co-hosts, so I'm going to tell you my quote anyways. My quote is, always ask yourself, 
what will happen if I say nothing? Simple. What will happen if I say nothing? And here's another thing. For every minute you are angry, you lose 60 seconds of happiness. They say a person needs just three things to be truly happy in this world. Someone to love, something to do, and something to hope for. Well, I love my family and my beautiful wife, Linda. I love to do something. I'm always doing something. Whether it's from early morning from volunteering or helping or giving people advice. Even when they mess me up. I had today a guy who messed me up and he came in for advice and he's going to donate to the campaign. And a guy, I told him he's going to lie to me. And he wasted an hour of my time. And you think he donated? You think he didn't take my proposal somewhere else to see if he can get a better break? Or use my ideas to somebody who already paid? At least I was busy doing something to help someone. And he said that, oh, Heshi, you helped me. So... I had another guy who called me, a friend of mine of 50 years. He says, hey, she, I have a gripe with you. I called you to help me get an apartment for somebody who didn't help me. I said, I didn't have an apartment available for myself, and the few people that I asked, you weren't qualified. What did you want me to do? I, I, I had nothing to call you back with. Oh, we found something. I said, what's the gripe? You should have been looking. All you did was ask for many people, but they always complain. And something to hope for. I hope for a better world. But don't think for a moment I'm going to let them forgive about October the 7th. I don't want war. I don't want war. But these Palestinians are not condemning what happened to October 7th. They took live babies and put them into ovens. I, I don't know what the pain is. The Palestinians are breaking in, UK, in, the, in, in, in England, in the UK. They're breaking into Jewish homes or businesses and breaking the walls. You guys are letting them get away with it. In Teaneck, New Jersey this week, they came out to protest and attacked the cops. And we let them get away with it. I was in a protest during COVID that we were just protesting that we don't want to be locked up and we don't want to wear masks, and they arrested me. Oh, you, they, they, you fought with somebody, and they locked me up for two days. Yeah, these guys get out in a minute. And I want you to hear the best part of this. They found a bunch of guys in a basement, uh, uh, migrants, with guns, Drunk, drugs, you're going to love this. Drugs, guns, and uh, where is it? I have it written down here. I'm just like, I'm in shock. Uh, drugs, guns, and other uh, 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 illegal stuff. And you know what? They let them out with no bail. You get arrested with a, a gun today, you're in big, big trouble. I don't know, guys. Here, eight immigrants found squatting. Last week inside a Bronx apartment were arrested on drugs, guns, and drug charges, but six of them were subsequently released without bail. The alleged squatters were busted last Wednesday after police received a call about persons with a gun was walking around. And they let them go. You know, not that the, the mayor goes and says crime is down. I have people telling me crime is up. The police themselves, I want you to hear this, the police, the, the New York City uh, 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 own police force said crimes hit levels unseen in two decades last year. Unseen in two decades. Um, I don't know, I think the internet is down, something's wrong here, but uh, whatever. Uh, I hope it's not down. I don't know, I think, what does it say? Uh, oh, it's back up. But anyways, in two decades... The shocking new figures from the NYPD internal report, which was obtained by the Post, shows that overall major offenses jumped up 127,101 uh, uh, whatever crimes. I don't understand. You're telling me crime is down? Yeah, it's stupid crime, so it's not rape, it's not murder. You know what? The, the, the police, and, and I love the police force. The police came out for this guy, Mr. Diller, at his uh, funeral. Wow, beautiful. Police came out to support uh, Officer Diller who was killed. And he's the seventh cop that was killed. How many regular people were killed during the last few months? Over 300 people? I mean, how many shootings? Over, over three, 400 shootings? I know of at least 40 or 50 that I read about murders and, and, and other crimes. How come the police don't come out for every one of those funerals? Every one of our New Yorkers, our neighbors, every one of those funerals, every one of those people killed should be respected and honored as well. I understand the cop is very important. 
Nobody should be killed in this city with all this, with all the police protection. We are so busy in the in this in this in the subways that we're putting out more police officers not to watch for crime, but to watch for subway fare beaters. That's what we're worrying about. The, the money that we're losing on fare beaters. Why don't you put people back in the stations? If you put the workers back in the stations, you'd save money. But what we have to do is play the game with the automatic systems and the cards and charge the credit cards with the easy passes. And we see people jumping the turnstiles, make the gates bigger. You can have protection. You know, they even lock, like I told you last week, the, the, the toothpaste and the aspirins in stores. You're telling me you can't make a better gate system or security system from getting through? Anyways, I'm still upset that people are not condemning the October 7th. I'm upset that these uh, Palestinians' marches are marching and they're not allowed to do that. They're not allowed to carry signs. During the COVID, I wanted to do, uh, uh, um, you know, a little event for the kids, you know, with, with music and, 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 uh, and like a little stage. And uh, the cops told me, you can't have any signs because it'll be like a protest. You can't stand on the street because we're going to arrest you because you're standing straight only if you marched and walked around. I said, but it's not a march and walk. It's an event. Well, then you have to use a private area or get a special permit. When I finally got a special permit, they canceled it on me because they said the other neighborhoods are going to be upset that the Jews, the Jews, that's what the cops told me over here that the Jews are going to have some kind of an event. But when the people had that same event in the Bronx or they had that same event in, in Manhattan or they had that same event down by, 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 by Park Slope with the Mexican Day Parade, no issues. It was the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. I'm telling you now, I'm not scared. I'm a Jew, I'm an American, and I'm not scared of anybody. And I don't want them to come, but we have to be ready. And there's a lot of us that are ready. A lot of us citizens that are ready, not only Jews, Jews, Muslims, blacks, whites, Asians, we are a team. But there are some idiots that just want to protest. You know, in Israel, the prime minister was in the hospital for a hernia uh, operation. And he came home. Right away, the leftists decided to make a, a protest and attack the presidential house. I mean, you don't even want to give the guy a rest? You're coming with no mercy? This is what the world has come to? Yes, I'm screaming. I'm going to tell you my joke. Maybe I can make you laugh. You know, I've been, Linda, I've been with Linda for 34 years, 33 years married to her. So when you're with somebody for a while, you wind up with your own way of communicating. Uh, you know, for example, the other day, Linda hollered at me and she saw me looking at her. What are you looking for in that closet? She's screaming at me. And I hollered back, nothing. She says, well, then look under the bed. It's there. It, 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 it was a joke, like, whatever. Well, I thought it was funny. I laughed, you know what I mean? Because she knew I was looking for something, and she just, you know, I didn't want to tell her what I was looking for, and she just, you know, we just, it was just like something we had to scream at each other. But it was like, that's what you're supposed to do every day, laugh, say a joke, or make fun of yourselves, or make fun of the things that you're doing, you know, or just comment and just try to keep into somebody's brain, just not sit there and do nothing. And, and uh, thank God she keeps me entertained all the time. Like today, she called me out of the blue. You know, the weather's bad. Has she, maybe you should cancel the show and come home. I said, really, Linda? When did you ever see me cancel the show? Why would you even call me to say that? She said, no reason. She says, no, I knew you wouldn't cancel it. I just called just for the hell of it. I had nothing else to say. And I like that. I like that. I mean, I know it was, you know, foolish, and I should have gotten angry at it and said, why did you just waste my time? But the truth of the matter is, it was at the perfect time that she did it. Um, I want to give you a, a little a little thing that I heard uh, on the uh, on the uh, on Instagram that somebody sent me. Hate has four letters, so does love. Enemies have seven letters, so does so does uh, what else? I forgot what it says. So does friends. Lying has five letters, so does truth. Failure has seven letters, so does success. Cry has three letters, so does joy. And negativity has ten letters, so does positivity. You always have a choice to choose the better one. I choose not to hate. I choose to love. I try not to have enemies, but I do, but I don't know what to do about it. I try to be positive, but again, 
Many times I am negative because I see all the, all the evil in the world. You know what my problem is? My problem is that I, I really, you know, I was, I was uh, summoned yesterday to a very important rabbi. Summoned. And I couldn't believe it. Who am I? What, what does he want from me? How does he know me? I mean, he knows me, but I'm nothing on the, on the list just to get into him, you know, to visit him and once in a while. Like all day, I have thousands of people. He knew my name and he called me when they came. Usually you get five minutes, ten minutes, and they have so many people. He kept me for two hours. And we had an issue in the local, in the community. And he wanted me to handle it. And it was like, I was impressed. He cares about people and he figures out ways to, to get things done. That is what we're supposed to be taking care of in this world. The, uh, the issue that I, I, I have with some people is I, I was helping a young man. A he was fighting with his neighbor about 18 inches. And his son, this, this guy, Heshi Goldberger, comes over to me and blackmails me. He says, if you help them, Heshi, he tells me, I'm going to tell people you ratted on me. I said, I never ratted on anybody. And he called the building department. Then his neighbor called the building department. And the building department chief that I spoke to says, look, you guys are calling on each other. Of course I'm going to issue you violations. I said, but it's a stupid argument. He says, well, I found something, and I'm going to get them, and I'm going to punish them. I said, that's not the way the city is supposed to do. You're supposed to help them and advise them. He says, no, they each told on each other. They told us what their mistakes were. I said, you didn't even know that they did something wrong. It's not even a danger. They're trying to say to you it's a danger. They want you to vacate and punish the other one, and you're getting involved and issuing violations. He says, hey, the city just made themselves $20,000, plus you actually are going to make money on, and stuff like this. I said, no, I don't want to get make money. And then this guy calls me up, and he's blackmailing me for 100 grand. I said, go ahead. This is what the city has come to. The city has taught us that if you fall down, I'm listening to a, 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 a commercial uh, by Rubenstein Law Firm, if you've been injured or you're a migrant on a job or somebody has hit you with a car, come call us. We're going to get you 10 times more than anybody else promised you. That's their thing. You know, of course, you, you, everybody bumps into another car when they're parking. Uh, and you call the police, right? away. accident report sue. Sometimes people run in front of your car. Nothing happens to them. Right away, you call the police. Oh, my God, it's suing. Somebody falls down in front of your building or you fall down in front of a building, lawsuit. And these people are suing and telling you to sue. Come on, how many times have you fallen in your house, bumped your leg, dropped a glass, walked on glass through your lifetime, walked on hot sand? You can't just sue everybody. Anyways, um, that is my thing. I want to do a few commercials, if you don't mind. And the first commercial that I'm going to do is for my company because I helped this week three people, even though I'm disappointed with a lot of my clients that, that I have to take over issues and help people. You know, the rabbi told me that I went to see, he says, Heshi, the reason I called you is because it's not the money that you want, that you do things with a smile. I, when I talk to people and I try to m mitigate problems between them, I do try to smile. I try to make people happy. It's not so much the money, you know, I have an election that's coming up, and we'll talk about that, but Green Line Building Solutions, everybody. Green Line Building Compliance, 202 Forster Avenue, my company. If you have violations, you have uh, uh, court hearings, you have plans, permits, you have stop work orders, vacate orders, call me. That's what I do. I give you free advice, and of course you go other places, and then you get ripped off, and then you come back to me, and then you go other places. Green Line Building Compliance, 202 Forster Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11230. 718-8710382. We're there all the time. We'll give you free advice. We'll give you some help. Pop on in. We have a parking lot. 202 Forster Avenue. I mean, I've done thousands of inspections over the last 14 years. I've been servicing this community for almost 30 years. Um, we, uh, we have a parking lot, as I told you, but we, we actually have a great team. You know, I had a lawyer came in the other day with, with some problems, and she saw. I said, look, you have a whole team here. She says, well, Hesh, I need a discount. I says, you know what? Take my proposal. Go somewhere else. Maybe you'll get it cheaper. But look at the team that I have to service you. Look at every time you called me, how we pick up the phones. That, my dear friends, on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, that is what we do. 202 Forster Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 1230, 718-871-0382. And then we have Weitengruber 
Law. We're Nicole, my co-host, who's not well this week, and she's not well, and I, and I want to wish her to feel better. Weitin Gruber Law, 1720 NJ34, Wall Township, New Jersey. 732-695-3303. 732-695-3303. You know, they do real estate, bankruptcy law. She does so much good stuff for people. She does also pro bono work. She helps people out. She, she, she hired a young man that I asked her to hire, and she made him do 50 hours of, of pro bono work. I'm very proud of her. Very proud of her. And YouTube, you're always welcome to call into the show, 646 974 Six four six nine seven four one five eight zero, and you're able to ask any questions on YouTube. Usually, they're very busy on YouTube, but it looks like nobody's um, commenting to me and this week on YouTube. Maybe they don't see me on YouTube. Who knows? Right, Gruber Law Firm seven three two six nine five three three zero three. A young boy just hung himself, thirteen years old, and and we have to we have to understand about mental illness. We have to see it in our young children. We have to deal with our psychologists. We ourselves sometimes are lost. There's a place called Crossroads. Crossroads is a very good place. 206 West Parkway Drive, Suite 1B, Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey. They have a whole facility. Their phone number is 609-645-2146. If you were just watching the show on YouTube, you'd see it pop up on your screen. But for you listeners, if you ever need to get any of these numbers, just email justenoughheshi at gmail.com. Just email us or text us, 646, oh no, I don't know what the text number is, but email us at justenoughheshi at gmail.com and you'll be able to get all this information that you want. 609-645-2146, they're always open. If you're a little lost and you need help, don't be ashamed. You know how life is so important? Did I tell you if 60 seconds of unhappiness is just a waste of life? No reason to be unhappy. No reason to be angry, but of course, I'm, I get angry too. So I understand that. Um, and then, of course, we have heshitishla.com. Uh, guys, I can use donations. I did qualify now with enough people for matching funds. I have the enough of the local voters. Slowly, slowly, people are questioning how I do it. You know, like today, I, I had a client that came in, and I said, listen, I need a donation. You don't have to give it. But if you want, you can give it. I had another person that just came for advice and I recommended him someplace. I said, you know, if you, you know, he said, how much do you have to or pay you? I said, you don't have to pay me. I gave, we have two hours a week of constituent services. If you wish, you can donate to my campaign. He wanted to give me cash and so on. I said, we don't do that. Take a credit card or a check. And he left. He said, I'll, I'll send it to you. I said, you know, it doesn't make a difference. I hope he does, but I trust him. You know, I have a lot of people that say they're going to do it. Otherwise, I'd be super ready, overdrawn, in the, I mean, over, over bundled in the, in the account. But we're not. We still need some more money. Uh, but uh, you can give $10, $20, $25, $175 max. HeshiTishler.com H-E-S-H-Y-T-I-S-C-H-L-E-R.com Yes, last night I went to a wedding, my third wedding I think this week. Yeah, I went, uh, I was at my son's bris, I had a wedding that night. Monday I had a wedding and then last night I had a wedding. I ran to the wedding right after the office and um, I, I, there I saw Carmen Yeager, the, the councilman who's running for the assembly. I shook his hand. We had nothing to say. Then he was talking to some uh, little reporter that I didn't even say hello to him because the guy just lies and is nasty all the time. So I just ignored him like he wanted to ask me questions. I said, I'm at a wedding right now, man. And I'm really very nice. I take pictures with everybody. I take pictures with the host and guests. But sometimes these guys think that my name is Biden. You know, like uh, Mr. Biden was doing a press conference about uh, uh, health care or something, and some people from Gaza, uh, the Gaza protesters started screaming, uh, free Palestine, and so on, and so far, eight. And at the end, uh, uh, Mr. Biden said, well, they have a point. What point? You know, I watched a video this week of food that was shipped in to Gaza. You know, this special aid, the free aid, you know what I mean? The free aid that was sent into Gaza. You won't believe it. It was being sold. On the market to people. What a nerve. Let's take a phone call. 646-974-1580. 646-974-1580. Do we have a caller? All right, looks like we have one. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hi. Hi, Heshi. Uh, I take in a lot of information day by day, and I have uh, thoughts every day, you know, like I kind of make progress this way. Today, um, am I talking with Heshi right now? You are, baby. I'm the only one at the show this week. There's nobody else okay. that came. 
Uh, What's my, your name my again? I forgot today your name. I forgot uh, your the name. Bible Hello, says I forgot that your uh, name. the devil is oh, a gosh. snake. And the thing is, it's like a cosmic power. And it's like, it sort of becomes the basis of all our, our, our relations and social interactions. Sometimes we can't get to the bottom of what's wrong, you know? All we got is this ominous feeling. Well, but we I, just try to I, I, I we, we you, try uh, to keep up with the, like the late breaking news as much as I we know. can. But how much can we stand? You know, I got you. I'm right. just saying we we don't get to like the bottom of things. Basically, you know. I, I don't know. know if you want to comment about the this this uh, late breaking news. I mean, that, like you know, all this bombing that has been happening that Israel has been doing, it's all been or, uh, what, uh, artificial intelligence. You know, targeting people. Uh, they don't even like the people that it's run by machine, basically, you know, it's like and, and they're, they're using terms like post conscience, like no conscience, you know, like. Well, I, I, I thank you for the call. And, and I want you to know something. Uh, uh, that's how we get our late breaking news. Uh, we get it from the Internet. And I, I know artificial intelligence. I know I saw all of that stuff. And I don't, I, I don't know what to tell you about that. Uh, um, you know, you know, we have like you, you were talking about the Bible. You know, there's a law on the books. And I want you to have a good laugh on this, everybody. There's a law in the books about going to jail if you have adultery. You, you hear this? There's really a law in the books. Uh, let me read it. Uh, I was reading about it uh, yesterday. Uh, New York's adequated adultery ban, one step closer to being tossed down to nine commandments. That means in the uh, Constitution or something of the New York, they had a law that if you committed adultery, you would go to jail. You know, I, I agree. You, you, you get married. You, you're supposed to be married forever. Get divorced. Get separated. But while you're together committing adultery, okay, whatever. It's one of the commandments. You can't do that anyways. People cheat, you know. Again, I, I can't tell you about myself because I know that I control myself. People ask me, uh, uh, Heshi, do you rape, rob, kill, and steal? I said, yeah, I do. I do. Everybody does that. But then we control ourselves. We control ourselves from raping, robbing, killing, stealing. Everybody has those urges. You've got to do it. Everybody has the right to do it. I mean, they don't have a right to do it. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, it's 100% wrong. But again, people do do it. And you're not supposed to do it. We have this law in the books. And it's like because the Constitution of, the, of New York City does follow the Bible. And what happens is we just took off that you commit, commit adultery. And adultery is one of the worst things in the Bible to, to, to deal with. So I don't know what to tell you. Uh, uh, you know, just like I'm reading that a sicko teen raped a woman inside the subway station. Yeah, crime is down in the subway. In the subway. People are looking. Uh, um, what, uh, uh, Siri, uh, what else? I see. Oh, yeah. Robbery. A guy went into uh, 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 um, one of those smoke shops. Okay, they went with machine guns to rob them. Machine guns. It means if these guys were just by mistake pushed the button, how many more people would die and scream and holler? I don't know what to tell you, my children. I just, I just, uh, I, I, you know, by the way, I didn't give any shout outs to my beautiful granddaughter, Mira Nava. Uh, my beautiful granddaughter Layla Tamara, my grandson Yeshua, uh, Yeshua, uh, Yeshua, uh, and uh, by the way, I had a grandson. We had a bris this week, and his name you're gonna love this Benjamin Hillel, B H, Big H. You know what I mean? They didn't want to name him after me, but they got screwed with the initials. And I'm having another grandson any day. I think it's going to be a grandson. And my son, Yaakov, is getting engaged. Uh, it's supposed to be a secret. We're not supposed to. I hope the girl is not listening. And if she is, hey, baby, I, he has a beautiful ring and bracelet for you. I know for a fact because it costs me a lot of money and we're broke. Uh, now we are, especially with the, But she's a beautiful girl. Uh, 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 and, and I'm so happy she's joining the family. Of course, we all know he's getting engaged to her, but you know, today with the young kids, me, I just took the ring and I threw it at Linda and said, hi, baby, let's get engaged and get married. But uh, no, I didn't do that. You know, I, I actually proposed, but I didn't get on one knee. I wasn't one of those guys one knee. I took it to a nice dinner. I said, Linda, here's the ring. Uh, how you doing? Everything good? She's fine. Good. Let's go home. We had a nice dessert. But my son needs to have this whole fancy event. They're going to make a big heart in the middle of the street and uh, with roses and he's going to get down and propose she understands after 20 something dates already that they're getting engaged and whatever but it's going to be a beautiful thing i think something for them to remember and now he's already rushing me into the wedding am i not right people no rush into a wedding now that he's engaged we're going to make a little party for him somewhere in Woodman. you all invited uh, but i'm going to invite you to the wedding and then we're going to make a wedding no rush in september 
In September, who needs a, a, a June wedding when nobody's around? July and August, you're all on vacation. I'm not going to drag you back. After Labor Day, you're all going to come to the wedding. We're going to have a beautiful... I'm trying to do it in an amusement park, but um, I'm not getting anywhere with that. Wouldn't it be great to have that amusement park wedding? I think it would be great. I think it would be wonderful, and, I, and I'm going to tell everybody to come. I think you'll all have a great time. Um, um, but again, I want to tell you about that. Before I got interrupted... Oh, look... People just keep calling in the middle of the show. I keep telling them that the show starts 9 o'clock, not to interrupt me. But again, they're selling food that we're giving them to the Gazans, that they're dropping an email, that they're delivering by trucks, and they're selling it in stores. They're stealing it. Who's stealing it? How could it be sold on the black market? I thought they needed to eat. I heard today that, uh, well, we have to go after Hamas. A lot of people were condemning uh, uh, the Jews for going after the Palestinians and, and, and working in civilian neighborhoods. And the people are telling them, listen, but, but the Hamas is hiding there. Well, it's not the Palestinians' fault. It's not the people's fault. It is their fault. Because all of them have not condemned the Hada ha Hamas. All of them are hiding the Hamas. Those people over there are working with the Hamas. And what I understand is they're part of different groups. Hamas is just one gang. There's four different other gangs or five different other gangs of people. They're all fighting with each other. If there wasn't the Jews to fight with, then they would be fighting and killing themselves. Just like they do in, in Syria. Just like they do in Somalia. Just like they're doing in Haiti. They come and they gang and they kill themselves. There's nobody else to blame. The Americans are not there. The Jews are not there. So you got to kill yourselves. If the Americans were there, they'd come after us. Just like in Afghanistan now, we're gone. And they're killing themselves there. I don't really care. What I do care about is America. America is going through a difficult stage right now. So is Israel. These are free countries. These are countries that care about their people. We give health care. We take care of our better. We have a better way of life. We still have hunger because, again, we're part of the political system. We have a lot of leftists. We allow capitalism to go, which is great. So a lot of those rich people who overly become rich think that they control our lives. You know, in the 50s and 60s, it wasn't like this. It gets more and more controlling. Aren't you seeing that from just the vaccines and the COVID? How do you close down a country of 300 million Americans plus? How do you close down a country of 8 million people? How do you close down a world without any evidence or proof? Now we know better. Now we know better. We should have known then better. We should have known that all of these were stories. I mean, we're not dumbbells, but it looks like we are dumbbells. We allow them to control our lives, and then we cry about it. The, 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 the founders of this great nation of America, which our Constitution is based on, and a lot of the people around the world, a lot of other countries, based their constitutions to start with, they understood what freedom was. They understood what it was to fight and give their lives for freedom. Their blood. How many millions of people have brought us to this point, and now we're just going to give it up? We just allow the government to do what they want. We allow them not to produce enough food. You know how much, just alone the $165 billion that we gave to Ukraine could have stopped homeless, <laughs> homeless just in the whole country. $165 billion. I don't know what to tell you. We tell farmers not to produce more food. If you have too much food, you can keep the prices high. Take the extra food and ship it to people that are hungry. You know how many people I feed every week and that's not enough? We, I'm getting extra food from somewhere. We're buying food from somewhere. So we can do it. We just want to make other people suffer. You know, we have people sitting on the floor crying. I, I, I saw this great restaurant and they, and they tell people, uh, buy a, a, a coffee or a sandwich and you can buy extra and put the bill on the wall. If somebody comes in hungry and they don't have money, they can pull one of those receipts and we'll give them the food. There was a, 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 a deli, I think, in the Bronx or somewhere. They were selling special sandwiches and they were giving the extra money to the police, you know, to the, to the, to the, to the widow and so on. And he says people were calling from other states and other cities to give him the money that he didn't have a way to send the sandwiches. And they said, take that sandwich that you're supposed to send us and give it to somebody that's hungry that comes in or a police officer. This is the way we're supposed to think. Trump, 
You all asked me about Trump over here on the computer. I'll tell you what Trump winning. Let me see. Um, let me tell you about Trump. Trump won. We knew he was going to win. Why didn't we all come out and vote for Trump? Why did some other stupid Republicans even put Nikki Haley or right other? Just to piss off, I'm part of a group. I told you that one guy was on there just writing and trying to upset the whole group. Voting is not a joke. Your vote is serious. The founding fathers said so. You want to go to Afghanistan? Somebody mentioned, what is it? Uh, Shahira law, Shara law, whatever it is. They punish and kill other people today. We built a country of freedom. Your rights to be free, to do what you want. You know, the Quran, I have no problem with Ramadan and the Quran. I love my Muslim brothers and sisters, and we had Muslims in our house and friends, and, and it's good, but sometimes you interpret it. We have the Jews that are also that, that interpret. We have crazy Jewish people that say Israel should be destroyed, or, or we should all move out of there. Do you understand that? Where do you want the Jews to go? To America? Why? I'm here. I'm an American citizen. I'm a Jew. I was born here. I love this great country. But the people that are born in Israel belong there. If the Palestinians want to go there, nobody's stopping them. They have to follow the laws. They have to work. You have to build yourself up. There's a lot of Palestinians in the, in the, in the army over there. Muslim Jews that are in the army. You have judges, bankers, businessmen. I think it was like 2 million uh, uh, Muslim uh, Israelis. 2 million? That's not a joke of a number. And those people are having a good life with their partners, with their, with their friends, with their fellow Jewish members. And of course, there's poor Muslims there too, just like there are poor Jews. Um, let's see. I talked about that election, and, 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 I, and I, uh, I told you about another bris that is coming up, and that's very good. And again, um, the, there's a lady, and I don't understand this. I was going to hope to speak to my, my co-host about uh, ma uh, the rep Republican representative Marjorie Taylor, ma ma Mar Marjorie Taylor Green. She's from, uh, 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 she, she laid groundwork on Friday for an eventual vote to strip the House Speaker Mike Johnson of the gavel. Why? Because he approved a $1.2 trillion spending package to avert a government shutdown. Now, Marjorie, do you have a better idea? Have you come up with an idea? Did you submit a new idea? You want the government to shut down? Is that what you want? You, she just needs fame. Some people need to have their ego or to, or to do it, to shut down my country, to shut down my government. You know, I can, you know, a lot of people make fun of me when I'm walking on the streets or they come over to me and smile at me. Oh, you should be president. You should be mayor. I say, just vote for me, councilman. There's so many things I could do. And, and, and everybody says, well, you'll lose. You keep trying. We so like it that you keep trying. I keep trying because I want to make a change. I don't want them to come after me. But the truth of the matter is, I know I can fight the system myself. People told me I, I have this uh, 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 lady I go visit every weekend. I meet her grandson there. And he says, hey, she, you can do more by not being in politics. By being there, they're going to they're gonna cuff you. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna hold you back. I said, no. He says, you do so much now. I said, but I'm doing it so little one at a time. Yes, I'm staying under the radar, and sometimes I stand before the radar. But I know I could do better. Why don't you give me a shot? If you think I can't do as good, but if you're not going to give me a shot, who are you putting in there? Somebody that has done nothing the last seven years? Are you happy with that? So you want me to do other things. You don't want me to run, so then you complain. So I do get exhausted doing it one at a time when I could do much more. And I'm going to continue doing what it is. But I can fight myself. I know how to defend myself. I know how to take the Constitution out. I know how to fight the system. I know how to fight the police. I know how to pay my taxes. By the way, April 15th, you have to pay your taxes this year. I already paid two of my taxes, and I still have one more bill to go, man. And Linda's freaking out because we're still short a couple of dollars. But you got to pay your taxes. You got to be as honest as you can. I mean, I think I didn't make a mistake this year. I'm hoping. Some people say, well, I didn't do it right, and maybe you, you took something. I think I did it pretty good, you know, but nobody's ever fully honest with their taxes, and there's always something, a mistake, and I have no excuse for that, and I hope they don't catch me doing something wrong, but I think I did a pretty good job of, of reporting everything that I made and, and, and deducting whatever I was supposed to deduct that I felt that I'm allowed to deduct, and... and uh, and I'm hoping I did the right thing, you know? 
That's what I'm doing. Uh, let's see if I have any other comments. Anyways, oh, majority, uh, uh, they're saying she wants to eliminate unnecessary spending. I agree with that. But again, did she come up with ideas? Did she tell us what the unnecessary spending is? I know you can save billions and billions of dollars. I know just the New York City budget alone that I've reviewed that I could take $4 billion right off the top as I get into the city council. I can produce that uh, 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 information to the city council and the budget committee. Four billion off the top. And if they don't do it, I'm going to tell everybody. But again, I'm not there to tell you. You know what $4 billion in New York City can do? And if we take the migrants, like, you know, Denver and other places, they actually have videos of people telling the migrants, you can't come here no more. Go to other states because we're not going to support you. Denver's doing it. We have no more place. We're shutting it down. We have nowhere for you to go. Go somewhere else. New York City has to do the same. We have so many people. We'll keep well, let's keep 17,000 of them. The other 90%, the other 160, 150,000. We have so much in New York City, we can send them to other towns and places and break them up. Yeah. Little by little by, we could do little by little. We can split them up. We can save another $11 billion of our budget. Another $11 billion. You hear that, Instagram? $11 billion we can save. People call during the show. They don't understand that the show is 9 o'clock. But you see, this is my point to you. People call me day and night. I take their calls. I want people to call me. Anyways, I have a problem with Ukraine too. I have some people telling me, where was the black beauty that you said no money for Ukraine? I agree. Ukraine got a lot of our money. But again, I don't agree with Russia attacking them. But again, I don't agree that Ukraine and Russia couldn't have worked that out. You know that could have been worked out. I believe Trump could have worked it out. I do believe if Trump becomes president. But here's my problem. Trump today asked uh, to have the case postponed, his criminal trial. Now, here's the thing. I have vacate cases that you can't vacate a squad or anybody not paying you rent for two years. They postpone these cases. I have criminal cases that go, that people are sitting in Rikers three, four, five years. Really, till it gets to court. You have people getting out on bail, committing 21 crimes and killing, killing police officers. You're rushing the Trump job. Let him become, do you see the man is busy? He's not screwing around. He has a job. He's running a campaign. He's running a business. He needs a little bit time till after the campaign. No, we're going to make him a trial now. I don't understand any other normal person would have had that trial postponed. Any other person would have waited for the for the uh, uh, for the uh, for uh, for the Supreme Court to rule on the immunity plea, but again, they're going after him. That's not America. That is wrong. That is wrong, people. Wrong, wrong, wrong. But uh, you know, yesterday I, I met the uh, District Attorney Gonzalez at, at a wedding. And I told him, I said, you know what, you, you know, you, you arrest the wrong people, you punish them. And I was telling him a little bit about my history. And I told the Gonzalez how many kids we took in, how many felons we helped out. He says, yeah, she, I heard. But I said, but you're not going after the right people. You're not stopping crime. You're not sending the police officers the right way. You're not pushing along cases. I know that when I become city council, I want to make an amendment or I want to make some kind of legislation that cases must, not 24 hours, the cases must get to, to, you know, you can't keep postponing the cases. You can't keep letting cases go five years, especially civil cases. They have to be done three, four, five months. You, you, you have the proof that it could be done with the president, with Trump. You see, you can push criminal cases along quickly. Judges that keep us playing it or let their clerks write decisions need to be fired on the spot. Lose their parking spots, uh, uh, not being given uh, stuff. You can't have that. You can't have an overloaded docket and say, well, you have 50 people showing up for court. I know how many times I've shown up for court and they have to postpone or people ask for adjournments and then the last 20 or 30 people are told, sorry, we're adjourning the case and we have too much on the docket. What? What the hell? I'm sitting here a whole day waiting for five hours for a judge that comes in two hours late. Then you make me sit another three, four hours telling me I have to come back in three months. And then in three months, I have to do the same thing. And then I have to be able to accept arbitration. And if I don't accept arbitration, you push me off again. And if that guy goes into default, he can order a show cause and push me off again. It used to be evictions three months, four months, six months. We understood that. A year. Now we're going to two years. It's just, it just, it never ends. 
And, and there's so many things to get upset about. What I'm giving you is small details. I'm not trying to be all over the place. What I'm trying to show you is that your government is wrong. And you don't have a big government. You have one mayor. You have 51 councilmen that can make the changes. You people are three, what is it, eight million people? We can scream at them. We can put the right people in. How do you have an assemblywoman, Weinstein, that, that now Mr. Yeager is taking over position for 44 years in the assembly? How come there are no term limits in the assembly? I'm running for city council now, and there's nobody to run against me. My competitors are David Schwartz, very bad man, and he did something bad, to whatever, cheated on his wife. I don't know if he's going to run against me, but here's a man that is, has no chance. At least I'm going to make sure that he has no chance. You have another guy, Mr. Ringel, who does not live in the community. He's going, he can't fake apartment, but he might do a fake apartment because he works with the mayor. I'm not going to let him get away with that. Because he didn't let me get away with it. He called the campaign finance board to investigate on me. He had me arrested during COVID because I made a protest. He threatened me that if I opened up the parks, five times he sent the cops after me. Here's a guy who's going to fake apartment and not live there, and he has to move his whole family there. If you live in an apartment, you have to live there with your family. I understand if you're in Washington or Albany, you can't take your family with you and you rent an apartment part-time, but you can't have an apartment 10 blocks away from each other and say, oh, I live here and I live there on weekends. It doesn't work like that. But again, so basically they have nobody against me, some guy Kaplan that nobody knows, so pretty much I have everything down set. You know what they did now? They have Simcha Felder, the senator, who ran around, who's been senator for, he was a city councilman, he quit his job in the middle. He then became, uh, to get more money, he became a, 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 a controller, deputy controller. He quit in the middle. Then he became a, a senator. He won the election. He's been sitting there for 10, 12, who knows how many years, okay? But, uh, easy, if I'm correct, easy 12 or 14 years he's sitting there. Now, he needs his pension. He, doesn't, he hasn't gone to vote in the Senate for like three years. He hasn't gone. He doesn't go. He doesn't feel well. So now he wants to become a councilman. Why? Because this way he doesn't have to go upstate to Albany. He's the only one. And he went around collecting now for the Senate to say, hey, she is running against him, which I never did. But he was able to raise money. Now he's going to come and try to run for city council. He doesn't live in the district. Now, here's a guy who has a whole house, a family, a mortgage. He's going to have to rent an apartment in the district. He's going to be committing a crime. He's going to be doing something illegal. And this is what we're going to vote him in. He hasn't been there enough 25 years. Don't we want changes? I guess not, my dear friends. I guess not. Um, anyways, uh, you know, uh, there is um, the Florida Supreme Court cleared the way for the state's six-week abortion ban to go into effect. You know, they're, the, 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 they're blaming it all on Trump. Uh, but the Bi President Biden's re-election campaign is, is launching an ad reminding voters that former President Donald Trump's role in ending the federal right to an abortion. For 54 years, they were trying to get Roe versus Wade terminated. Now, I'm not saying that abortion is bad. Of course, abortion is bad. I don't believe in abortion. I think abortion is wrong, and I don't know what my YouTube people are going to scream and holler at me. Uh, um, by the way, uh, what are they saying? All I know is, I, I don't know, I read something that I didn't pay much attention. Well, they're saying that we're headed the same direction that we headed with, with Lincoln. I don't think Trump is going to get killed, uh, but I don't believe in abortion. Uh, but again, we can't stop abortion completely. But again, we have to, there has to be a limitation. You can't have it go uh, eight months or third trimester. You can't. You can't. And again, like I said, the abortion pill you have, you can do the next day pill. You have to be more, you have to be more vigilant. I understand rape and incense and all that stuff. But again, we, we have to, you know, you can check all this out right away. You could check out right away after you have sex. Maybe you, can, you won't know about it the first month, the second month, the third month. But to, to have abortions six months in, nine months in, it's not normal. It's not normal. I don't agree with that. 
Uh, by the way, everybody, uh, uh, before my, my listeners on uh, WSN and all the radio and all the UT people go off the air, the uh, lotto Powerball is $1.09 billion. Now, I never buy lotto tickets. I think it's stupid, waste of money. Linda loves it, and I buy her lotto tickets instead of flowers. So uh, this week, I went to buy her an extra ticket. I wish Linda wins that $1.09 billion, and uh, maybe she will buy me nicer ties. I don't know, because she spends too much money. Uh, uh, again, uh, again, I want to tell you about Trump. The judge delay, judge. I mean, the, the judge on his April fifteenth hunt money trial. They want a criminal. They want to put him in jail for something stupid. We have murderers, killers, rapists that we let go. We have their cases on hold. We put them out on bail. You saw we had six migrants with guns, drugs, and everything. Out, and out with no bail. They're not going to see the, the trial if they don't get a deal for what? For, 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 uh, for two, three years? Here you're rushing Trump. You want him to be found guilty, and they want to put him in jail. This particular case can put him in jail. Unacceptable. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to fight back. I'm very angry. I'm going to fight back. Um... Anyways, the timing of this is terrible, and uh, I, I'm telling you now that I don't feel that it's right uh, how our government is running. You people should see it, how our government is running. You people on, on YouTube and, and Facebook and all my radio listeners should stand up, scream, and holler. When you see protesters like the Palestinians, I mean, these guys are nothing. I mean, I understand maybe, maybe if you had some Palestinian uh, descendants, but you have guys. I mean, I heard one black guy uh, in Teaneck, New Jersey, says, watch when the black people come out, we're going to punish you. I don't understand. The black people are coming out to fight against Palestinians. You, do you know that if you black people go to Palestine, what, they will treat you like dogs? Go to, go to, 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 to the, the Arab immigrants. Go to Saudi Arabia. Go there. You'll see how they treat your workers. They treat you like dogs. They shove you into like animal houses. They don't let you roam free and try that. You don't even know what segregation is. And you're coming after the Jews because you have nothing else what to do. How do you go and protest in the middle of a day at, at, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Don't you have a job? I wish I could go to some of these counter-protests. I actually have a job. I actually can't go. I want to go. I want to film them. But that is life. Anyways, we're going to have to say goodbye to my listeners on WSNR uh, and WNEW and WPIVD, whatever, in Miami. Uh, thank you for listening to the show. Come back next week. Maybe, maybe my co-host will be back and we'll be able to talk with them and, and ask them questions and, and so on like I always do. But again, as you can see, we have a lot to talk about. You can always call into the show and talk to me and, and it's a pleasure always to give you my opinions and to get you uh, upset. And before you get off the air, October 7th, those murderers to be punished. I will never forgive them. I will never forgive those people in Palestine. I don't really care what they're doing in Gaza. I have no mercy for them. I, I know what's going on there. I, and, and again, now you see that the aid that we're giving them, they're selling it. The aid that we're giving them, we're selling it. So what are you gaining? Thank you, my friends. Thank you for listening to the show, and goodbye to you guys. I'm going to give you a quick, uh, before we get off the show, I still want to still tell you about Green Line Building uh, Compliance, 202 Forster Avenue. You have violations? Call into the, call us, 718-871-0382. Don't be scared. 718-871-0382. You have a violation. Heshi will help you. That's what I do. And, of course, Nicole's law firm, Viking Gruber Law. You have some bankruptcy issues. You're having some money issues. Call her real estate problems or real estate that you want to help with. Call her at 732-695-3303. 732-695-3303. Or just ask or email just enough Heshi and we'll give you all our numbers. And, of course, Crossroads. If you have a depression problem, call them. Uh, 609-645-2146, 609-645-2146, very important, and don't forget the heshitishla.com website, uh, we could use a donation, $10, $20, $30, I get matching funds, I don't care where you're listening, I don't care what town you're from, send it in, I'm telling you I can win this one. I'm telling you I'm here to get it done. I'm telling you I'm going to stand up there. I'm telling you I'm going to show them a way to cut the budget. I'm telling you I'm going after the DOB, especially when a, when a, when a, when a supervisor, a, 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 a chief, tells you a, his name is Bach. 
well, you Jews are ratting on each other. We're going to find you. That's not how you give a violation. You give a violation if you catch us doing something wrong. Not if something was built. And we beat, you know, these people actually won the court case. They produced evidence that what was there was there before they bought it. And, and Mr. Box says, well, if you go back to 1939, I don't see any permits. I said, well, some years there might have been permits or you lost information. Well, we see no records. Since there's no records, even though you won the court case, we're still issuing you a violation. Go legalize. I said, but we were able to legalize 10 years ago. We can't legalize now. Or, or we'll need to put, we'll have to break open walls and put in sprinkler systems. That's the only way to do it. I don't care. That's what he says. And you know how many times I've seen inspectors or, or, or seen their homes? They have more illegal stuff there, but nobody, they know the law not to let anybody in. We're seeing them commit crimes. We're seeing our, our elected officials and judges coming into their courtrooms at 10 o'clock in the morning when they have to be there at 9. They're giving their decisions or their overloaded work to their clerks to make decisions. Who are these clerks? They're law students? It's not their job. Their job is for you to write it up and them just to type it up or to go do some research for you for you to write it up. But these judges are lazy. And, you know, this is what New York has come to. We are a lazy, uh, uh, abusive uh, protest. I mean, I mean, since COVID, have you ever seen a day that we don't have protests? <laughs> Floyd protests, COVID protests, counter protests, Palestinian protests. It just doesn't end. What is New York City? We're just wasting our lives. We can be so much more productive. And we do as we stand there and we let them get away with it. We let them rob us. Our bosses are telling us in the store, don't stop them. You know why? It's not that we don't want you to get injured because we, if you do, you sue us. But we get insurance money. And the big stores today, they're covered. It's the little stores that don't get covered. I have now a little store that had a, a fire in their store. Everything by the book, the fire marshal, everything was perfect. I went in there, give a report, we fixed everything up. Insurance company wants to see a video because we had cameras. We said, well, the cameras were destroyed. The, 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 the. Well, it must have been recorded on some back thing. They said, no, we don't know how to get that recording. We don't have it. They're not paying. Somewhere to find. Now they're going to have to hire more lawyers and other lawyers to take their money and they'll make some kind of a deal. Again, the big people are getting away with it. The little guys are getting screwed. So the little guys have to block themselves up, have to protect themselves up extra, have to, uh, have to lock up their toothpaste and aspirin. Anyways, uh, our show is coming to an end. I want to thank everybody for listening to my show and my ranting and raving. I want you all to be safe out there. I want you all to take good care of yourselves. Uh, as you know, we're in April. The, uh, the, um, the holiday of Passover is coming uh, April 21st. Uh, so we're going to still be on uh, uh, next week and the following week, even though uh, the following Sunday uh, my son is going to get engaged. I'm not allowed to say it out loud, but I know he's not listening to the show anyways. And So we can just tell you April 14th is the engagement party, but I'll invite you all anyways uh 